Hello and welcome to another FreeCAD tutorial with me, Andrew. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the path module within FreeCAD, where we'll be able to create the component you can see on the screen. Now you'll be able to post this in G-code to Computer Numerical Control or CNC machines. So within part one, I'm going to show you how to set up the actual job itself. So this includes things like setting the part within the stock geometry, the uh, origin point, and the different types of tools that we'll be using uh, and how to set those up. In part two, I'm going to show you how to create uh, the different tool paths, uh, which will then eventually create our part. And I'll then show you how to post into G-code uh, using different processes. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into it. So the model you can see in front of me, I'm going to post that up on GrabCAD, hopefully, uh, with a link in the description. So if you would like to follow along uh, with me, then go ahead and download that. If not, and you'd like to use your own model, then that's absolutely fine as well. Hopefully that should, everything I do should apply uh, in exactly the same way. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the drop down and I'm going to click on path, which I've already done up here. And I'm going to click on this icon up here, which is going to create a new job. And I'm already collected, uh, I've already selected the uh, job that we've got. Now template is set to none. I'm going to click OK. This thing is going to bring up this side box over here. I'm going to click on the general tab. Now in here you can edit the label of the job if you'd like to. So for me I'm just going to set it as a simple sort of number like so. Model we've already got selected and you can set a description if you wanted to. Uh, template export is something that I, I'm not entirely sure about at the moment um, so I'm not going to go too much into that today. And I'm going to click onto the output uh, tab. I'm going to set the processor to Linux CNC. And then I'm going to put my output file as sample model dot g code, like so. Spell that completely wrong. Once I've set that, I'm going to go over to the setup tab, and I'm going to start changing the stock geometry for the part. So as you can see at the moment, it's selected to extend models bound box. As you can see, it's got a mill going the entire way around the border, as well as on the top and on the bottom. So what I want to do with this is, well, first I'm going to show you what we can what we can actually do with this. So we've got create a box, which basically just creates the overall size of the actual stock uh, of the actual part we want to machine. Now you can actually obviously adjust all of this, but I don't think it gives you that much flexibility. You can create a cylinder. So that will create a cylinder around the actual part um, and use existing solid, basically uses what you've already got. Um, and I believe that basically leaves you with things like the pockets, the holes, and for us, the 3D pocket. So today I'm gonna to be using the extend models bound box, which is the third one down in the list. I'm gonna set the extend Z, the one on the left, to eight millimeters, and that's going to extend the top as well. So I'm just gonna go back over to the right I'm going to set that to one millimeter. So as you can see, we've now got eight millimeters at the bottom so that we can hold on that in our fixture, in our vise. I've got one millimeter on either side. And I've got one millimeter on the top. So I'm going to set myself back to isometric and I'm going to click on this point up here. I'm then going to click down here and set the origin. Now what that's going to do is, is when I put the stock into the machine to be milled, I'm going to probe on the X on this side on the X and I'm going to probe on this side of the Y and then obviously the Z on top of the stock. Now the reason why obviously we, we want to probe the stock, we don't want to probe where the part's going to be, we want to probe the stock because we want to get our part out of the stock material that we're actually putting into the machine. So that's where we set our origin. So now we can actually move the, the part around if we wanted to. Um, so if we wanted to move it upwards, left to right, um, and we can also move it diagonally as well but for me I'm just going to leave that exactly where it is uh, in the center of our stock. So now we're going to go over to uh, oh, default values. So default values we're going to leave those where they are. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the safe mode to 5mm as well offset uh, and I'm going to go over to the tools tab now. For this I'm going to add a few different tools. Now as you can see I've already added those tools and I'll leave again the um, setup for those tools uh, in the description down below. Uh, so basically I'll show you how to create these tools. So what you would do is you click on new tool, you would name that tool, so let's call it just a 10mm uh, end mill like so. It doesn't have to be in capital letters, you can do it however you want. Uh, the type is set to end mill, but as you can see, you've got a, a few variations of tools that you can use. 
uh, which will come through quite a few of those uh, later on. So for this one, it's going to set to end mill. So when it comes to material, it depends on what tools you have available to you. But for this, I'm going to set it to carbide. Uh, the length box offset I'm going to set out to 150. So 150 is basically uh, from where the spindle starts down to the bottom of the actual tool itself. So I'm going to set the diameter to 10 mil because we've got a 10 millimeter end mill. And I'm going to set the height or the H, which is the cutting edge. I'm going to set it out to about 25 millimeters. I'm going to say OK. Now what that will do is that will actually add our tool. Um, to the list if we, if we want it um, and so what we can do is we can actually edit and change that however we want so I'm going to delete that because I, I no longer need that one because I've already got my 10 millimeter um, 10 millimeter uh, in, in the list already and to delete you just have to click the box and click delete so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these to our actual job so I'm going to select all of these tools like so in the tick boxes and create tool controller. I'm going to say OK down at the bottom here. Now as you can see we've got seven tools here which is including the default tool which we'll delete in a minute. But we've got six tools that we're actually going to use within our job today. Next we're going to go over to the work plan tab and as you can see there's nothing in here at the moment but in the second part when we start filling out our different paths such as the pocketing or the adaptive uh, roughing and stuff like that, drilling, you know, it will start to fill up this work plane here. Op defaults, again, I don't know what they are, so I'm just not going to go into too much detail about them today. So now I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, we have created our, um, our actual job onto the left hand side on the tree. Uh, we've got all of our tools here. I'm going to delete the default tool just by clicking, clicking on it and clicking delete, saying yes. Uh, and as you can see here, we've basically got everything that we've created so far. So we've got the stock, and if I click on that and press the space bar, it will highlight where our stock is. So as you can see, our part isn't actually within our stock, mainly because the placement of the part, uh, the zero, 0, is actually on the bottom face here. So if I hide that stock again, it's actually, the zero, 0, is actually about here, um, which we don't want. We want it to be in the center of our stock. So I'm going to go over to our fillet over here. So we're going to click on the actual part. I'm going to click on placement and click on the three dots here. I'm then going to set these. So on the X, I'm going to set out to 25. On the Y, I'm going to set out to minus 25. And on the Z, I'm going to set that to minus 21. Now, as we can see, we're back to where we want to be. So we've got uh, a millimeter on either side, a millimeter on the top and eight millimeter underneath and the same on this side a millimeter and a millimeter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click apply and OK. So now the part is within our stock material, the origin is set onto our uh, back left corner and on top uh, and now we're going to start moving into editing the tools, uh, things like feeds, speeds um, and the general geometry. So I'm going to double click on the 10 millimeter end mill, I'm going to set the tool number to tool 1, so that's what this number is here. And I'm also going to set the comment to tool one as well. I'm going to change the horizontal feed to 29 millimeters a second. And I'm going to set the vertical speed to 16 millimeters a second. I'm then going to set the spindle, which is in RPM. I'm going to set that to 9,549. And it's in a forward, which is a clockwise cutting motion rather than a counterclockwise cutting motion. Um, which, depending on what tool you have, obviously you can change that um, but if I was to use a right hand cutting tool uh, and I put it into reverse it would rub uh, rather than cut. So there we've got that. If I click on tool here it basically brings up what we set earlier so we've got the 10 millimeter end mill, end mill, carbide, 150 millimeter long and we've got obviously our diameter 10 mil and our height there. So we've got that as 30 millimeter cutting depth. I'm now going to click OK and I'm going to click onto the second tool. Now if you look into the uh, description as well, I'll also have a list of all the speeds, feeds um, and the geometry. Um, but I'll just quickly show you this one. So I'm going to set this to uh, tool 2 and again I'm going to set the comment to tool 2. I'm going to set the horizontal feed to 18 millimeters a second the vertical speed to 16 millimeters a second and I'm going to set the spindle speed to 10,000 rpm. 
Now, for the ball noses, I'm not entirely sure why the ball mills. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, but when you actually set the tool geometry or the tool data, uh, it doesn't actually save it unless you physically um, edit it on the drop down tree. So if I set this, this is a 5mm, I believe, so we'll set that diameter to 5mm. We don't need to do the flat radius because there is no flat. I'm going to set the corner radius to 2.5 because that's half of the actual diameter because it's a ball mill. Uh, the point tip is 180 degrees and the cutting edge for this again will set that as a 30 millimeters and I'm going to set that as OK. So I'm going to quickly go through and I'm going to finish off the rest of these and you can do the same. Okay, there we have it. We've now set our uh, tool feeds and speeds, and we've also set the geometry of the ball mill. Now, for the 6mm end mill, I'm going to actually set the comment to 6mm 1.5R, which basically it's a ball, ball mill rather than an end mill. So basically, it's got a 1.5 rad uh, on either side of the actual cutter. Um, and basically, what that does is when it actually roughs out the pocket for the 3D pocket for us. Uh, instead of having a sharp edge uh, in the corners, it's going to have a slightly radius edge um, and that will stop any scoring on the inside of the pocket when we go to finish it up later. Um, we should hopefully help out the ball mill and the finish quality. So there we have it. That's the end of part one of the path module. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to create the tool paths, uh, which will then eventually create our part. Uh, so in this video, we've actually created the tools, we've created the feeds and speeds, um, and the tool geometries. We've created the stock around the outside of our part as well as giving us plenty uh, to hold on to at the bottom. And we've also set the origin point and made sure that the part is in the center of our stock material. As always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. And don't forget to leave a comment uh, in the comment section down below letting me know how to improve uh, these videos and what you, what you enjoyed most about them. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in part two.